Good morning and welcome to BC 103 New Testament Survey. Last class, we studied on the facts from the Gospel of Luke. So how much do we remember from the Gospel of Luke? Anyone can just unmute and share a few details about the Gospel of Luke that stood out and that you learned about this book. Yes, Sean, you can unmute and speak into the mic. Uh, Ma'am, I think, I mean, uh, the Gospel of Luke, Luke is very in a detailed Gospel. So Luke asked around a lot of people in order to get the right, accurate information to put in uh, when he's writing each and every passage in, the, in this book. So it's much more detailed uh, uh, Gospel than the rest of the Gospel. And he was also a historian. So that's why. Okay, thank you, Sean. Sean. Um... Okay, thank you, Sean, uh, for giving that information. Anyone else? Yes, the Gospel of Luke is much more informative and in detail, as Sean said. Yes, Chida. Uh, the Gospel of Luke, it's written by Luke. We know that it's written by Luke. And it's like he didn't meet Jesus. Even though he heard about Jesus many things, he used to go with uh, Paul, he heard and he write. And this is where he writes songs and all. And it's uh, written for like Gentiles and Greek. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Chira. Yes, Luke was not the eyewitness. And uh, it was written to the others, the Gentiles and the Greeks. Thank you so much. Anyone else would like to add on? Anyone else? One more person. Luke is talking more about uh, Jesus um, rather than his preaching, his actions, what he has done. Okay, Luke okay. is talking about the actions. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, today I'll just take you through a story format of the Gospel of Luke where we'll be covering the complete Gospel of Luke and you can remember. Let me share the screen with you. Not much, it's the same. I'm just sharing it so that we keep it interesting. Okay, so we all know the author of this book is Luke. Is Luke the author of only the Gospel of Luke or? Yes, he's also the author of the book of Acts. He's a physician. Okay, that's why he, uh, the writing style is very different, very informative, and it's in detail. Any other thing that you would like to add on to the author? Luke was he was also a close companion of Apostle Paul who was with him in most of his journey so this would make Luke the only Gentile he was the only Gentile to write the gospel of Luke and Acts okay so what's the big idea have you any time thought what's the big idea of the Gospel of Luke. We all see that the Gospel of Matthew portrays Jesus as the King. And Gospel of Mark portrays Jesus as the servant. And Gospel of Luke, yes, it is a, yes. Okay, yes, thanks, Jekyll. She has said, perfect, ideal man. Yes, the Gospel of Luke gives a unique perspective of Jesus as the Son of Man, as the perfect, ideal man. So here you see the phrase, Son of Man, was Jesus. Okay, so Luke, uh, you know, uh, about him, we all know that he was a physician, he was a 
Paul's traveling companion. And in Luke's gospel, we see there's a lot of takeaways. There's a lot of takes and views of Jesus. So the gospel, like we see uh, uh, in this gospel, we see Jesus as a teacher, preacher, a friend, and a leader. And also we see him as a powerful healer. So Luke presents them all in one. It's a biography of Jesus Christ, which has uh, about 24 chapters he has written in detail. And this can be divided into four moments. Just give me a minute. Please give me a minute. One second, I, I don't know what happened to the presentation. Yes. <coughs> Just getting the presentation done, which has these four points. Okay. A minute, please. Okay, you can note down these points. Okay, everyone can see that in your screen, right? You can see it. Okay. So the Gospel of Luke has 24 chapters and we can, which is divided in four movements. The first one is the preparation. Second, it, it is also called as the four P's, okay? Preparation, power, parables, and passion. So the preparation part, it talks about who Jesus is. The preparation part talks about who Jesus is. The second part, when we discuss the power, it talks about what Jesus did, the signs, wonders, miracles. Okay, the third, the parables talks about what Jesus said, what Jesus said about the kingdom of heaven for us to understand. And the fourth part talks about the passion is about what Jesus accomplished for each of us on the cross. You all got it? The four points, the preparation, the power, the parables, and the passion. So we uh, do we know what is the preparation is? Can anyone say the preparation is who Jesus is? The power talks about what Jesus did. Okay, now let's go. How about the parables? Yes, what Jesus said and the passion, what Jesus accomplished. Well, this is, um, you know, the Luke portrays, as we know, talks about Jesus as a man or the son of man. He portrays Jesus as rabbi, teacher, preacher, who ha who's having this compassion to teach, preach, and to comfort and heal the sick, heal the suffering. So here in the first part, first part, the preparation, we see Luke writes to a man named Theophilus, who may be a Roman official, and he's aiming to give him an orderly account of Jesus' life in detail. So that's why we see in this book, this book is so studious and focused on Jesus' teaching because of this 
aim to give an orderly account. So he gives an extra information like the circumstance about the birth of John the Baptist who was Jesus' cousin. And he also goes ahead and mentions about how John the Baptist's dad, Zechariah, was muted because of his unbelief. And also, this is not mentioned in the other book. So he also mentions about the birth of Jesus. Jesus been born in a barn in the presence of the animals a detailed picture how the situation was that's why he gives a complete narrative the information for you and i today to understand now the cattle shed that we have in our time you know what we see may not be the same that was there back then it may be like a den we don't know it definitely it may not be like what we see in our time okay it is very different and we also see further, he also narrates about how Mother Mary was filled by the power of the Holy Spirit and how she sang a song, the Magnifica, a wonderful song of commitment and faith. And also we see the baby Jesus been presented at the temple and there were two old wonderful people who were present there. Who are those two wonderful people? Yes, Simeon and Hannah. They both knew exactly who this baby Jesus was when the parents came and presented him, did a child dedication at the temple. And in, in the book of Luke, we, uh, we get the only story of Jesus' childhood has been recorded. There, uh, his family was in Jerusalem for a Passover and they left him there by mistake. They would have thought, okay, he's gone with the cousins because they all usually travel with family. They travel, a huge gang travels together. So they thought, okay, maybe Jesus with somebody else. But later between the journeys when they realized that Jesus is not with them. And then they had to come back to Jerusalem and they found him in the temple sitting with the, all the other elders asking questions and answering the people at the temple. And this was amazed. And when they got him there, he, they asked him what happened. And he's like, I'm about to do my father's business. He had to remind his mom and dad, his parents about he's been sent to fulfill father's business. So this is one of the reminder of Jesus' childhood is mentioned in the Gospel of Luke. We also see Jesus' cousin, John the Baptist, preaches prepare the way for jesus as per the prophecy of isaiah and also in the book of malachi which has been foretold about the uh, foretold and also in the gospel of luke we see jesus genealogy addressing back to abraham and back to the first man adam it is only in the gospel of luke where his genealogy goes back to the first man adam <clears throat> As a final story of preparation, Jesus defeats the temptations while uh, he also records about Jesus fasting for 40 days and 40 nights in the desert. And through a quotation scripture about, you know, how Jesus overcame the temptation. In the Gospel of Luke, he mentions how Jesus overcame. Yes, they have listed only three, but there may be more temptation. But here in the Gospel of Luke, he has listed three temptations and how Jesus overcame those temptations with scripture. And let's move on to the second part. What is the second part? The power. So when we talk about the power, we see... Uh, Luke narrating classic stories that people think of when they think of Jesus. So when we think, just imagine we in the class, what do we think when we think about Jesus, stories of Jesus? Like he, um, you know, he preached to a big, large crowd. 
Just imagine there was no mic system there. How he could preach. Every time I go on a mountain top, this will come to my mind. How did Jesus preach to 5,000 people? How did he preach? How was he audible? So, and also we see Jesus healed. Everyone who came to Jesus were healed. Everyone. There may be many sick people there. But not to everyone Jesus woke up and went and healed. But one thing we can be assured, everyone who came to Jesus were healed. And even the unclean spirit, the lepers, the paralytic, some people on the Sabbath day, they were healed. So we see, um, <clears throat> and even uh, the widow's son were raised from the dead and he healed the centurion servant. And all of these healing shows Jesus' power. Jesus had power for sickness and disease. He also did some big miracles like calming the storm by speaking to it. He, the very word, the very word, the storm was calmed. He fed 5,000 people with one lunch. Just with two fish and five loaves of bread, he fed 5,000 people. Um, can I finish this point, Sean? I'll address it. And he also transfigured himself on the mountain. So during the transfiguration, who are the two people who appeared along with Jesus? Moses and Elijah. They showed up. And uh, Jesus, did Jesus call all the 12 disciples and he transfigured? Or did he call only, sorry, only three disciples? Okay, who are those three disciples? Peter, James, and John. What are these three disciples called? They're called as inner circle. Most of the places, Jesus had only these three disciples with him and he performed a miracle. Even when he was raising the girl back to life, Tabitha, you know, he, uh, he, along with the girl's parents, he allowed Peter, James, and John. And during the transfiguration, we see Peter, James, and John. Even at the Garden of Gethsemane, they were disciples. He brought these three a little further, and he made them sit. And you, he said, you sit, I and mean, you all pray here, and I'll go a little further. Many instances that Jesus had these three disciples very close to him. And they are called as inner circle. Yes, with that, we will ask. Yeah, yes, sure. Uh, yes, it's not more of a question. It's not more of a question. It's more like I want to add a point. When I think of Jesus, the one uh, story that comes to mind is when he preaches near the sea, uh, near the beach where the crowd is too big. So at one point, he had to go into the boat and push it up. Uh, uh, a bit far from the shore and from there he had to preach so i just wondering how he would preach you know with the waves crashing you know it's such a large people the distance between them so how would he be able to preach message in that those conditions yeah thanks Thank yes see if you see all these instances again there's a question like how people would have heard jesus even near the beach like what sean shared Jesus just moved his boat a little further and he spoke, he addressed a huge crowd. One thing the Bible says, wherever Jesus was, there was a huge crowd pressing toward him. <clears throat> Sorry. We also see that uh, uh, during the time of the miracle, uh, Jairus, when he was uh, on his way to heal Jairus' daughter and this uh, woman who had uh, the problem with the blood, uh, men with the blood for 12 years she had this problem and you see there you see the whole passage when you read you see the narrative which says like you know the crowd was pressing but she was not bothered about the crowd but she made a way to read jesus to touch the hem of the garment so here what we see is there was a crowd pressing toward jesus huge crowd 
and that is how it is like whenever jesus stepped out to preach and teach to people there was a huge crowd following jesus so in this huge crowd definitely the crowd don't be silent <clears throat> isn't it how did everyone get to hear jesus that itself is a miracle isn't it i feel that when there's a thirst within us to know him i think our spirit gets connected no matter how far he is what he says we could hear we could understand if you see on the day of pentecost when there were 3000 people when peter preached his first sermon everyone could hear him and also understand in their own language so that was the lord's doing isn't it same thing same thing the lord enables us to understand even though our uh, our scripture has been written in our own language when people read it they don't understand it unless and until the holy spirit reveals it to them unless and until the holy spirit illuminates the word we cannot understand what it says so the understanding comes from god so jesus also calls his disciples and he preaches in the synagogue and accepts the women uh, uh, ex accepts the uh, uh, women and you see there's a co cross culture he never said that only uh, the men can preach and teach not the women he allowed the women to be part of his ministry and we also see john the baptist Uh, uh among his disciples we see john the baptist disciples also joined the disciples of jesus like peter and andrew were part of john the baptist disciples and he sent out uh, apostles to preach and heal and there are many more stories when we read the gospel of luke also uh, the stories that show jesus power and jesus also teaches about the fasting breaches a full sermon with similar content of the sermon on the mount but this time he is preaching on a field okay so he begin this parable he um, uh, we we are talking about the parables the third the third part so he begins um, the parables to foretell of his own death and the other teachings and once again he is he is actually teaching and and allowing only certain people to understand the parables when he is when he is sharing the parables why is jesus teaching in parables what is parables can anyone say what is parable anyone anyone from the class can you all can unmute anyone can unmute and share uh it's basically short stories which uh, it's easy for people to understand uh, uh it's basically short stories for people to understand and he did in such a way so that people can understand what he's trying to say what he's trying to preach because uh, like uh, like us when you read the bible we don't understand most of the passages right away only when you read and you try to understand we get you know with uh, when it's in a story format people understand much better but i just say a uh, mat uh, like a news a uh, uh, particular news you just say it like that as it is people will understand when it tell in a story format people can understand the, uh, the what you're trying to tell much better and i think that's why he preached in parable that's the purpose of the parables anyone else okay good shot yeah. i want everyone yeah, uh, he... anyone yeah. else anyone from online what are parables why did jesus a uh, tell stories in a parable format what was uh, the can you hear me yes. can you hear me tell in parables okay. hello can you hear me from the class yeah. am i audible i'm just saying am i audible <clears throat> i can't see any chat yeah 
Nina said something, is it? Or she had typed yeah. on the chat? Yeah, I, I uh, can uh, say I'm audible. Okay. So it was actually examples from daily life, but with a spiritual lesson. When he wanted to communicate a spiritual point, he used a, a parable so that it is understandable. So that was from daily life. You know, uh, examples from daily life, which we can relate to. But there was always a spiritual lesson behind it. Thank you. Thank you, Nina. Everyone understood what Nina was saying? OK, Nina was trying to say it is a story. <clears throat> Sorry, Nina, we actually couldn't hear you the first part when you said. Are you able to hear now? Nina, if I you said, like, I, uh, can you hear me now? Yes, yes. OK, so I said examples from daily life uh, used uh, things from which everybody can relate to. But there was always a spiritual lesson behind it that he wanted to communicate. And that is why he used those things to reveal that spiritual truth. Were you able to hear this time? <laughs> yes, yes, this time we heard you. Thank you. Yes, it is a spiritual story to reveal the heavenly truth. That's right. Yes. Yes, parable is a story which is an heavenly story. It has a heaven, a uh, kingdom of God. It, it, it involves a kingdom of God, the heavenly story, which reveals the spiritual <clears throat> truth. We also see the story, <clears throat> parables, is something that has been said only a few set of people who can understand. And it also hides from the others, the unbelievers who do not believe Jesus. Yes, sure. Go ahead. Um, and you know, also try to say that the parables, how they relate to our daily lives. Yeah, that's it. I don't know. I was trying to say that uh, when Nina started to talk about parables, she said how it relates uh, relates to our daily life also. Yes. When she said the first time, that's what she said. Yes, thank you. Thank you. That's right. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So in this gospel of Look, we see a large amount of parables been shared, don't appear, uh, which is not there in any other gospel. So Luke says that Jesus turns his face to Jerusalem and teaches and tells the stories on a long journey there. Jesus also teaches a lot on this journey about the cost of following him. He teaches about the prayer, the sign of Jonah, the uh, the evil deeds of the Pharisees, ove to the Pharisees, and much more things he shares through the parable format. So we also find more narrative moment on the journey of Jesus uh, when he's sending out the 72 followers on a mission. He also taught Mary and Martha about the difference. The role of Mary and Martha when they invited Jesus home, you see the difference in their role. One was very busy in cooking and, you know, making all the other arrangements, whereas Mary just sat at the feet of Jesus and heard him through. And when Martha was annoyed, you see what Jesus said, Martha, don't disturb Mary because she has chosen the better place. So th through this parable, Jesus is asking us, to being in his presence is much more better than doing anything else. That is the best place. So he brings a difference between being and doing things. And um, as this is the gospel of, uh, as Luke would raise his gospel, as a, Jesus as a son of man, we see uh, him giving more importance towards the human 
the human side of the factor. We also see that only in this gospel, we see that, you know, how he narrates Zacchaeus being a short man. And he brings out a moral story from the life of Zacchaeus. He writes that there was a most famous man uh, 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 about uh, Zacchaeus. He says he was a tax collector who was rejected by the other Jewish people. He was a very short man. Uh, uh, he wanted to see Jesus because he could not see what did Zacchaeus do. We all know the story, isn't it? He climbed up on a tree to look at Jesus among the crowd. So as though there was a huge crowd around Jesus, Jesus took attention on the Zacchaeus who was on the tree. And Jesus approached to a rim and he called him down. And, um, you know, Jesus uh, ended up having a meal at Zacchaeus' place, including the other tax collector friends. So what happened? The Pharisees were upset with Jesus, the outcome of that. But then what happened? That was not the only outcome. You see the good side of it. Zacharias repented. Repented. And not only he repented, he also showed it in action. So whomever I need to repay, I will repay him four times. So Jesus responded, you know, in transforming the people around him. He went toward the sick. That's why he also said, you know, um, the sick need the doctor. So Jesus was here for the sinners. When the Pharisees questioned Jesus, you, you don't you know about them? They all are sinners. But Jesus said that sick need a doctor. And he was with them. He went, uh, he met the prostitute and he changed her life. He met the tax collectors, he changed their life. You see, whomever Jesus met, he brought a transformation in their life. He healed the sick, he transformed the sinners, he healed the lepers. He brought the word of salvation into their life. So the reason of this section called the parable is because the main focus here was Jesus. He was an iconic storyteller. He got some of his best ones um, here in this gospel is the rich fool who died before he could enjoy his selfish earnings. He also went ahead and uh, shared about a fig tree that bared no fruit. So it's birth. He also shared about the mustard seed. Mustard seed, it could be as small as it is, but it had, when it is planted, it had the power to break the rock and grow into a massive tree, turned out to be a blessing to many. A parable about choosing places of humility, way to sit. You know, in this gospel, it has been narrated. Story about a man with like really lame friends who wouldn't go to his party. And so he invited the poor, the beggars on the street were invited to the party instead. Uh, he also shared about the story of a lost sheep, story of a lost coin, the story of the prodigal son, a father who wanted his sons back to him. A story about a dishonest and a shrewd manager, a rich man in hell and the poor man in the heaven who's on the <clears throat> In the heaven another one about a widow who won't stop bothering a judge until she get justice uh, uh, so he also gives a picture of the persistent prayer he also shares about a story story of the pharisees who prays prideful prayer in the temple whereas a tax collector prays humbly before god saying i'm not even worthy to look at you he also shares a story about a money being given to a servant to make more money for the master. The story of the talent. Another one uh, about the wicked tenant. This is the largest section of Jesus' storytelling anyway in the Bible. It got some of its best known and least known for known stories. Jesus, uh, Luke is also showing Jesus as a 
teacher, as a rabbi who uses creative methods to tell about heaven coming to earth. In the fourth part, with this we will move on to the fourth part, that's the passion. So in this final week on the earth, Jesus' trial is been narrated in this book, where he's been tortured to be killed. Jesus entered Jerusalem on a donkey, while the people yelled Hosanna and he weeps over the city of Jerusalem. He makes heads roll at the temple by flipping tables. He's so upset because they changed the temple into a money lending place, a marketplace. So Jesus also uh, thought more during his final week about the destruction of the temple and what will happen in the last days. He also taught a lesson from a withered fig tree and teaching on taxes. <clears throat> we also see that with this intellectual and social battle with the Pharisees and the other scribes and lawyers, he also, um, you know, tried to uh, try to defend them with the truth, and uh, this offended these Pharisees and scribes. So they went behind Jesus and planned a plot to kill him. We also see Jesus' own disciple, Judas, betrayed Jesus while he was praying in the garden of Gethsemane. Not only Judas, what did Peter do? What did Peter do? Peter denied Jesus when he was on trial. It's not only about Peter and Judas. Most of the time we highlight them, isn't it? What about the other disciples? They ran away. They ran away leaving Jesus. You know, there was a time when they all were talking, who's going to be next? Who's going to be uh, next with Jesus? Who's going to sit on his right hand or left hand? Everyone wanted that position, isn't it? But now an actual time came the time of trial, no one want to be there. In fact, James and John said, we can be there. We can do what you are trying to do. You know, uh, We can drink the same cup. So Jesus said, yes, indeed, you can. When Jesus said that he's talking about when the Holy Spirit comes upon each and every disciple, they'll endure to death. But at this point, at this point, they could not. Because they were all filled with fear. They ran away. They fled from Jesus. So now Jesus is alone. He's been tortured, beaten. And Jesus stood before Pilate, who's a Roman leader. Pilate found no guilt on Jesus. And he was sent to Herod. And now Herod looks at Jesus and Herod also finds no problem, no guilt. But then what happened? Jesus' own people, Jewish, Jewish people screamed louder saying, crucify him, crucify him. The own people for whom he came, they pointed out Jesus and said, crucify him. So the soldiers led him away and he was so weak. When he was carrying that cross, he was so weak that, you know, the soldiers had to take help from the crowd. One man to come and help to carry the cross. They thought even before, if, if you know, what if Jesus dies even before we could crucify him? So they brought a man from the crowd to carry the cross for Jesus. So that he may die on the cross. So Jesus was crucified on the cross and we know what happened on the cross right what happened on the cross what are the seven words that jesus spoke on the cross i had a i had a video i mean There were seven words that Jesus spoke on the cross. But the last one, what was the last one? He 
Yes, so Jesus screams with a loud voice on the cross saying, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. By saying that, Jesus actually quotes from Psalms 31 and he died. He was a great teacher, preacher of the world had ever known, was betrayed and killed by his own people on a Friday. But the biography doesn't end there. The third day, okay, he rose again and his followers went to his tomb and they witnessed that Jesus was not there. That Jesus was not there. And then what happened? They only witnessed an empty tomb and the angel of the Lord gave them a message saying that go to Galilee and meet him there. And then on the way to Emmaus, the disciples were walking. And in this gospel, we see that Jesus joined these two disciples, but they did not realize it was Jesus. And Jesus pointed out certain things. You know, there was a strange man who joined and started to explain to them about the Old Testament and the Pentateuch, everything that was taught to them, to Jesus. And when the strange man disappeared suddenly or he vanished then they realized it was Jesus the strange man was Jesus so the disciples were perplexed so it was the final teaching from the greatest rabbi in Israel's history so at the end of the book we see some of his disciples were having dinner and Jesus appeared to them and even he ate with them okay that was the transfiguration this is on the road to Emmaus and here we see that Jesus was with his disciples and he had dinner with them he ate fish and Jesus uh, we see he lift up his hands on the last day I'm not too sure if I have that video. No, I don't have that video. Okay. <clears throat> I don't have a picture for that, but it was on the final, uh, uh, it was on the last day, Jesus, you know, lifted up his hands and blessed them. You see the last chapter of Luke and he, he, he was lifted up into heaven to be with his father. So the book of Luke ends to be continued in the book of Acts. So if we say the gospel of Luke is a biography of Jesus, we can say the book of Acts is a biography of his followers. So being said that, being said that, what is our learning from the gospel of Luke? What is our learning? How can we apply? What is our learning? What is the application that we can carry from this gospel? Anyone? So we see that the Gospel of Luke portrays Jesus as a profound implication for our relationship with God today. He gives a lot of teaching, a lot of stories where we can relate, we can build a relationship with God. Jesus walks us through the gospel of Luke, illustrating his deep, abiding care for his people. We can see the compassionate heart of Jesus to each of us. It is just not for the people who live there, but to each of us. The compassionate heart towards us. So do we believe that God loves us no matter what we have done in our past? Do you believe that? The fact that the eternal son of God 
stoop down to this lower or he humbled himself to be a human and be one among us he took the form of human flesh and made himself subject to the human limitations he left away the godly glory and he took away the human limitations and here we also see that you know how much god cared for each of us and he he moved with compassion he showed himself whenever jesus moved with compassion we see there were signs wonders and miracles he was there for people he paid attention to the least he paid attention to the poor he paid attention to the tax collectors the sinners he gave them a new life he was there for those who were rejected he also showed an ex- he illustrated himself saying that i am here for them for the lost that was one of the reason through the parables he spoke about the lost coin the prodigal son the lost sheep he left the 99 and he came for the one by illustrating all that jesus saying if i can do it you can do it can you go behind the lost can you be there to comfort someone can you be there as a strength when somebody is weak can you be a companion for those who are rejected that's the one of the reason why jesus gave us a new commandment saying love your neighbor as yourself yes love your god with all your heart strength along with it he said love your neighbor as yourself we all have ourselves as a priority but then you are got to say give that to another person love others love your neighbors do good to them don't return evil to an evil but return good so this is what jesus is I mean this is what luke is illustrated jesus for us to learn and take it so that we can apply all these qualities in our life so class that's the end of the gospel of luke can i request you all to please unmute your mic add your side of the story add your learning so that we all can journey together Yes, stop sharing. Yes, please feel free to unmute and share your learning. If there's anything that you would like to add on. Thanks. Um, I want to say that uh, there's other two. Uh, what I wanted to say is, ma'am, is that when Luke shows, uh, when other books. show like uh, in the law what he preaches this miracles and all that luke shows or in mean, luke shows jesus when he is not doing those miracles not preaching who is behind that you know when we uh, he show he shows how we should be when we there when you are preaching and you are not preaching also he shows both sides to it you know uh, whereas uh, you know, as we as people we can learn from this like we for we, for, we only stay good when you are when you are preaching to people you are like uh, telling people what to what not to do as teachers we act at as a certain when you're preaching but when you're not preaching when you're at regular cells we for most, most of the time forget those rules i need to apply not we keep telling people those rules uh, when you're preaching but you don't follow them ourselves when you're not preaching so jesus shows that perfectly when you, whether he's preaching or is not preaching how you should be as a certain person so it's more relatable uh, luke shows jesus to be a more relatable person to us you know how uh, we too can be like him this way i understood Thank you, thank you, Sean. Thank you for sharing that. We also see Jack in as a post to the comment. He has set an example for us to follow in every way. Yes, he was tempted. He was betrayed by his own. He loved people, knowing who they are. He was with them. He prayed with them. He sacrificed and went through the suffering so we can live today. Thank you, Jack in. Thank you so much. 
And also we see Shiv Kumar sharing about the parables he has shared. Parables are the story which has an inner truth about spiritual lessons. Anyone else would like to share? Please go ahead. You can either post it on the chat. Okay, because of the time, we will end the session with a word of prayer. Can I request one of you all to please unmute and pray so that we can close the session? Anyone from the class? Sean, would you like to pray? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you very much for guiding us all here for this lovely class. Heavenly Father, thank you very much for help us, uh, help us a good understanding about this, uh, about the Gospel of Luke, Heavenly Father. Thank you very much for helping us learn new things, Heavenly Father, and thank you for leading us mighty and, and learning about the Gospel of Luke, Heavenly Father. And I thank you very much for helping us learn new things to Dan and I, Heavenly Father. Thank you very much for leading us mightily to help learn new things, Heavenly Father. And please continue to do so in one of our classes to come, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for joining in today's session. See you all tomorrow. God bless. Thank you.